John 8 verse 58 is my Christian brothers and sisters favorite verse to quote when they're out of options to prove that Jesus claimed to be God. Before Abraham was born, I am. In the Gospel according to John, Jesus existed before Abraham. They claim there are seven instances where Jesus makes a statement alluding to his own divinity. These are known as the seven I am statements. When Moses asked God how he should be identified to the children of Israel, God said, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. Does John 8 verse 58 refer to Exodus 3 verse 14? Does this phrase imply the expression of God's nature? When Jesus claimed to be the light of the world in John 8 verse 12, wasn't he declaring to be God? Does the statement, I am, the most direct of all Jesus' statements, indicate Jesus is equal with God? Is the author of the Gospel of John claiming Jesus is part of Trinity God when he has Jesus say, Before Abraham came into being, I am. What did the Jews attempt to stone Jesus for? What claims did Jesus make about himself? What did Jesus say about Abraham? If Jesus is God, does that mean he is the creator of Abraham? But is that the case? Next, you'll see how Jesus in John 8 verse 58 did not say, I am. This is not a proper translation according to the Greek and the Hebrew translators. Because in the Old Testament, Moses and God were dialoguing in Hebrew. The New Testament is written in Greek. Therefore, Jesus rather said, I have seen Abraham before he was even born. And you'll see the clear evidence and proofs from the linguistic perspective of both languages. Good evening everyone, greetings and welcome back to Blogging Tawheed. Ramadan Mubarak to all my Muslim family and friends. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us witness Ramadan. Ameen. Allahumma ballighna Ramadan. Alhamdulillah illadhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadiyan wala an hadana Allah laqad jaat rusul rabbina bil haqq sadaqallahu alazim to my christian brothers and sisters may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you and open your hearts to see the truth within yourselves and around you amen now when jesus was arrested in the garden of gethsemane he asked the soldiers in John 18, verse 7, Whom are you seeking? What are you looking for, man? They said, We are looking for Jesus, right? How did Jesus respond? John 18, verse 8, I told you that I am He. And since I am the one you're looking for, let this other man go. When Jesus said, I am He, the one you want. Did he mean, I am he, God, you want to arrest? Does John 8 verse 58 say, I am God? Does that mean they were looking for God to arrest him? Jesus says, I am he, Jesus, I am Jesus, the one you're looking for. Now imagine if the secret services are looking for me and came to my house or 
to my job or to the garden. But I asked them, who are you looking for? They said, we're looking for Tawheed. We want to rest him. We want to rest Tawheed. I respond by saying, I am. I am. I am he. I am does not mean God. I say, I am Tawheed. Because how are you supposed to answer a question or an inquiry about yourself? When someone calls your phone and says, Hey, may I speak to Tawheed, please? I say, This is he. I am he. I am Tawheed. I am is used for what? I am is used to identify yourself. It's a very common personal identifier and it occurs in a number of Greek texts. Yet, every English Bible, this is the only place John 8 verse 58 is translated I am. And these are the same translators, by the way, that translated it a different way in other places. And you expect them to translate it the same way in this verse. You follow me? When Moses goes to the mountain, he was commissioned by God the Almighty, not Jesus. God the Almighty to go and liberate his people. He asked God saying, look, what shall I say to my people who might say, hey man, who sent you? Moses here, was he talking to God the Almighty or was he talking to Jesus? In Exodus 3, chapter 14, I mean, chapter 3, verse 14, God the Almighty supposedly says, I am what I am. Ihiye, Ashar, Ihiye, in Hebrew. Ihiye, Ashar, Ihiye. It means, I am whatever I am. I am who I am. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about who sent you, man. Go do the job. I sent you, now go and get it done. I am who I am. A CEO comes to your job to inspect your place and gives you firm orders to fire someone because he knows better. He knows what he has done. He's seen the financial reports and this guy was stealing. He tells you to fire this dude immediately. You asked, who are you? Who sent you? He replies, don't worry about it, man. Do the job or you will be fired. I am who I am. I am whatever I am. Don't worry about it. Get it done. This is also common among people when they say, accept me the way I am. Don't judge me, man. This is how I am. I am that I am in Greek translation is ho on. Ho on is I am. The Greek word for I am in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14 in the Old Testament is ho on means I am. I don't want you confused now. I want to simplify things for you. In the Old Testament, the Greek word for I am is ho on. In the New Testament, the Greek word for I am is ego imi. In the Old Testament, the Greek word for I am is ego imi. The Greek word in the New Testament in John 8 verse 58 for I am is ego imi. Does it sound the same to you? Does it look the same to you? Unless you see something that I can't see. Ho on versus ego emi. I am before Abraham was. I am Jesus. Before Abraham was, I am. Now how was he, this I am? Was he with God? If you say... Jesus was with God, that's fine, it makes sense. 
the Muslims believe that Jesus was with God. You also were with God. I was there with God as well. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah 1 verse 5. How many times did you read Jeremiah and all this time you never thought about it differently till now and you will never again read it the way you used to before today God says before I formed you in the womb I knew you before you were born I set you apart I appointed you as a prophet to the nations you mean to tell me that he was a prophet before he was in his mother's womb what kind of prophet is this? This is insane, isn't it? Was he with God? Of course, he was with God. In other words, in the knowledge of God, Jeremiah was there, Jesus was there, Abraham was there, Moses was there, Muhammad was there, you were there, Adam was there, Biden was there, Trump was there, McConnell was there, Pelosi was there, Hitler was there, Obama was there, Einstein was there, Putin was there, Netanyahu was there, with the Antichrist who was there. Everybody was there. All God's creations were there. From Adam to the last person to be born. In the knowledge of God. He knew long before that you will be watching this right now and that one day inshallah you may revert to worshiping him alone and not the statues and the idols I mean may Allah guide all of us God knew all of this he has knowledge but we were not there in this form Jesus was not there in his form in the knowledge of God we were all God's plan in this sense Jesus was there with God before Abraham was born into this life historically even though chronologically Abraham was first before Abraham was born to this life to this world we were all there how what form in what shape and what size no form no size no shape no nothing in the knowledge of God he is the omniscient he is all-knowing he knows everything before and after I want to share with you something very fascinating you've never heard before and I want you to think twice about it according to the Islamic tradition this is what happened at the beginning of our universe. In the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked all of his creations, such as angels, mountains, planets, stars, etc., if they wanted a free will and be held responsible for what they do in the universe. All entities in his creation declined. So before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, peace be upon him, he sought the souls of all humans together and asked them the same question about being given them the free will to do whatever they please but be held accountable for their actions in this life. All the human souls agreed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's condition. We don't recall this event because what happened before because this happened before we were born and it has been removed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from our memory but on the judgment day that promise will be revealed as evidence that we agreed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's condition so every human being will have no other option other than to accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's verdict that will be based upon our actions performed under that free will in this life that we accepted remember this that the angels do not 
have a free will. They do exactly as they are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why there will not be a day of judgment for angels, only for humans. Yes, you heard that right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did ask all of us before creating us if we wanted to be tested or not. And if we have some of the well and we have some of the relevant verses of the Quran that proves this. We find two spots in the Quran that mentions this event in different way. The first verse that I want to mention is Surah Al Araf or the heights in English. And it says, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan rajim Bismillahi rahman rahim وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ شَهِدْنَا أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَلَىٰ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ The translation it says and mention when your Lord took from the children of Adam from their loins their descendants and made them testify of themselves saying to them am i not, not your lord they said yes we have testified lest you should say on the day of the resurrection indeed we were of this and where the verse continues or lest you say it was only that our forefathers associated others in worship with Allah before and we were but descendants after them then would you destroy us for what they falsifies the the falsifiers have done and it continues this conversation and it says and thus do we explain in detail the verses and perhaps and maybe perhaps they will return this is Surah Al-A'raf to simply explain the context this verses mention the collective testimony from the entire race of mankind the words of testimony and the reasons of taking this testimony the second surah that talks about this collective testimony is surah al-ahzab the combined forces where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim inna aradna al-amanata ala as-samawati wal-ardi wal-jibali fa-abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al-insanu innahu kana zaluman jahula Indeed, we offer the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains and they declined to bear it and feared it. But men undertook to bear it. Indeed, he was unjust and ignorant. It was so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may punish the hypocrite man and the hypocrite women and the men and women who associated others with Allah and that Allah may accept repentance from the believing men and the believing women and ever is Allah forgiven and merciful. Now the word amana here means trust is used for obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mankind accepted accepted this willingly. Reason of this covenant is mentioned in verse 73. It is reward or punishment. If you do good, you do good for yourselves. If you do bad, you do bad for yourself. My sins are mine. Your sins are yours. Jesus' sins are his. Moses' sins are his and nobody's. No one carries the sin of another. Your sins are with you forever. You are responsible for them. 
Jesus is not a free ticket to get to heaven. Now someone might argue that I don't remember such testimony or covenant done by me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies in the Quran in the following verses. هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَيِّرُكُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ حَتَّى إِذَا كُنْتُمْ فِي الْفُلْكِ وَجَرَيْنَا بِهِمْ بِرِيحٍ طَيِّبَةٍ وَفَرِحُوا بِهَا جَاءَتْهُمْ رِيحٌ عَاصِفٌ وَجَاءَهُمُ الْمَوْجُ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ أُحِيطَ بِهِمْ دَعَوُا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ لَئِنْ أَنْجَيْتَنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ صدق الله العظيم The translation it is He who enables you to travel on land and sea until when you are in ships and they sail with them by a good wind and they rejoice therein there comes a storm wind and the waves come up in them from every place and they expect it to be engulfed they supplicated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincere to him in religion if you should save us from this we will surely be among the thankful فلما أنجيناهم إذا هم يبغون في الأرض بغير الحق يا أيها الناس إنما بغيكم على أنفسكم متاع الحياة الدنيا ثم إلينا مرجعكم فننبئكم بما كنتم تعملون صدق الله العظيم But when he saves them at once they commit injustice up in the earth without right O mankind your injustice is only against yourselves being merely the enjoyment of this world, of this life. Then to us is your return, and we will inform you of what you have, what you used to do. Due to this attitude of arrogance, mankind was declared the Roman Jahula. In verse 72, unjust and arrogant. That's the human's nature. And just and arrogant. There are many verses of the Quran and narrations of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that explain this. However, for a believer, God the Almighty is supreme, and His obedience is a must for eternal success. Now, this is the meaning of before Abraham was born, I am. In this sense, Jesus was there with God before Abraham was born, into this life. We were all there. Now, why the Jews took exception to this? They take exception to everything, anything and all of it. In John 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. The Jews would pick up the stones to stone him. A deliberate misunderstanding of the context because they don't want to understand. The Jews were looking for any excuse to stone Jesus, his entire ministry. The Bible doesn't mention that. The Bible only mentions the stoning of Jesus when it's convenient and directly linked to Jesus, blasphemy by saying he is God. But the reality is the Jews have stoned and tortured their own prophets, including Jesus, his entire life. This is nothing new. Why? Because they don't, they didn't like his teachings. They didn't like other prophets' teachings. They were stubborn and refused Jesus' teachings. Look at what they did to Moses the moment they crossed the sea. Watch my video and you'll see what the Jews did to Moses. I'll put the link in the um, comment section. The Jews were continually out to get Jesus out. They didn't like his teaching. And the Messiah, the Mashiach, according to them, must be rich and king, not such a poor man like Jesus. Now back to my favorite gospel, according to John, before Abraham was I am. It is only found in the gospel according to John, the last of the four gospels to be written. Suppose Jesus said something like this. What would indicate his divinity? 
Why is this phrase not mentioned in the previous Gospels? Why does it only exist in the Gospel according to John, the most controversial Gospel? I am going to conclude with some interesting notes from a Christian scholar. James Douglas Dunn, a New Testament scholar and theologian, is considered one of the most respected mainstream biblical scholars. Says in his book, The Evidence for Jesus, I quote, Call it scholarly skepticism, if you like, but I find it incredible that Jesus would author all these I am statements. But these statements would be missed and neglected to be mentioned by the previous Gospels, earlier than the Gospel according to John. End of quote. James Douglas Dunn is clear in saying that these are not the original words of Jesus, but these sayings were circulated about Jesus. He further proves that the later the gospel, the more they tended to pick up sayings about Jesus, especially the gospel according to John. The question that comes to mind is, what is the real Jesus of history in these four canonical gospels that are considered later developments and not eyewitnesses. Do we have any earlier documents than the four Gospels that could confirm the sayings of Jesus? Unfortunately, we don't. What we have is the sayings of someone that said these are the sayings of what could have been said according to the sayings of the said person who heard it from someone else that might have said some sayings about another person who narrated some sayings, etc., etc., etc. Therefore, John 8, verse 58, is agreed upon and considered a deliberate mistranslation of Jesus saying, I am. If you want to expand your knowledge further about the historical Jesus, read for yourself what James Douglas Dunn admitted in what we uh, will prove to be Don's magnum opus series of books, beginning with Volume 1, Jesus Remembered. Another book of his, The Living Word, which will surely change your thinking. If you think the Bible is free of errors, read The Living Word. You will no longer affirm biblical inerrancy. You will be introduced into the problem of sodomy and canonical criticism like never before. Till next time, greetings, wassalamu alaikum.